Okay, we have Shadowplay on. Twitch is live. So welcome to the video, guys. Today we're going to be going over the Sepulchrum. The Sepulchrum is a weapon that you get from Deimos uh, in Trotty Standing. It's one of the few weapons. You get the Sepulchrum, the Cedo, and there's a melee weapon I can't remember. It's like a set of claws. Okay, so the Sepulchrum is, uh, it has a unique effect where after you get five kills, you're able to um, aim in and it targets up to five enemies and it'll, it'll shoot a shot and hit all five of those enemies at the same time. Um, the actual f regular fire on the Sepulchrum is, uh, it shoots two bullets at a time, they're explosive pellets, they do you know, fairly good damage. It's extremely high in crit and extremely low in status. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, build it completely for crit. We're going to kind of forget about status because it's just a, a low status weapon. So what we're going to do is we're going to put um, Galvanize Diffusion on for multi-shot. Galvanize Crosshair is on for crit chance. Um, Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker for... Uh, crit chance, crit damage. Lethal Torrent for fire eight multi shot. Corner Strike for flat damage. Sharpened Bullets for uh, critical damage. Now you're going to have to be aiming in for for this effect to work, but you're going to be aiming in anyway because of Galvanized Crosshairs. And then Prime Heated Charge, um, just basically for more flat damage because you're not you don't really have a high status chance. Um, now, the heat procs you do get are going to be nice because it's going to add uh, CC and uh, a fire proc. But you're not really going for that. You're really just putting prime heated charge on for, for flat damage. Secondary deadhead is going to be the arcane we use. There's two other good options for this weapon. So um, this weapon has a very slow reload, and so Merciless is a good option, but it does have a very high magazine capacity. So you don't have to reload very often, and that's why I choose Deadhead over Merciless, but Merciless is an option as well. Um, Cascadia Flare is another option. The only uh, problem with Cascadia Flare is that uh, the procs are counted separately, and so you really need to be pumping heat procs out to stay at 480%. And this is a slower firing weapon, so you could stay at 480%, but you're going to be struggling. So I, I feel like Deadhead and Merciless are a little bit more comfy to use on this weapon instead of uh, Cascadia Flare. And then Steady Hands just for uh, recoil reduction. Uh, in this series, we're going to be uh, testing weapons on their own merits, so I'm not mixing anything else. There's not going to be Warframe abilities that mix with the weapons to increase them in uh, power. There's not going to be... I'm not going to be killing with Warframe abilities. There's not going to be, um, you know, pet abilities or, or pet weapons that are adding procs or anything like that. I just like to test the weapon on its own merit. So because of that, we're going to be using an Anaros. He has no mods or arcanes that affect weapon damage. Uh, a pet with no sentinel weapon. That way he's not adding any kind of elemental procs. And he also has no mods that affect weapon damage. What we're going to do is we're going to do a 10 minute in uh, Kuva Survival Steel Path. Just to see how this does against trash mobs and acolytes. And then I'll take it through a Lua Conjunction Survival where the enemies are a little bit uh, stronger. They start at like 180 to 200 level. And we'll see how far this weapon will get me there. It's, it's a little bit tougher on the Lua Conjunction because at that five minute mark, you're going to have Thraxes and usually the Acolytes spawning at about the same time. So weapons that are a bit weaker will struggle and usually won't pass that point. But we'll see how far the Sepulchrum can get us. So we're going to do the Kuba Survival first here. Stand 
I'm going to use my 4 to double my armor, and then that's going to be the last ability I use. If I have to use an ammo pad at some point, I will uh, let you know. Now it's going to start at uh, mostly yellow crits, but this will go up to orange and red crits when it's uh, fully at max stacks, but you're probably mostly going to be seeing orange crits. It can do red crits, but you're you're going to have to be um, you know, at full max stacks, and sometimes you'll have a, a stack fall off. So after you get five kills, you're able to do the, the special effect of this weapon. You see that little bar in the middle kind of filling there? So when I get one more kill, it'll fill up completely, and then I can just kind of wave it over enemies, and it'll target up to five enemies. It's a little bit of a clunky effect, and so I would suggest not to waste too much time, like, perfectly getting five enemies. If you wave it across a group of enemies and only, like, three or four are selected, that's fine. Just do that. Just just fire it. Because spending too much time in that uh, targeting mode will make you lose stacks, so... Just don't, don't get caught up trying to get exactly five enemies in that targeting mode every single time. The, the regular fire does does just enough uh, damage as well. You know, you don't need to get all of your damage through the targeting mode. You see, we're starting to get closer into uh, red crits here, but sometimes we're we're dropping back down with the yellows. So you could just kind of look at this build as a um, an orange crit build, where you know when you start off, you're going to be in yellows and at at max stack, you'll be in reds, but you're primarily going to be doing oranges. set of life supports behind this group. I'm going to hit one life support and then we'll turn around and deal with all the enemies that are heading our way. On Eximuses, this does struggle a little bit. It's not a uh, it's a powerful weapon, but it's not really powerful enough to deal with these these big guys, and you will start losing stacks because you're not killing enough. So you may want to, before you fight an Eximus, you want to make sure that maybe you're at full stacks first. You kill a few of the little guys, and then you deal with the Eximus. I also wanted to move out of that hallway just because sometimes hallway fighting um, makes weapons seem stronger than they, they really are. Just because it's you know super easy to line up enemies. So when you're in, when you're in an, a more of an open area, kind of gives you a better idea of how the weapon really will uh, work. Because anything's really going to feel strong in a hallway.
off there. I'm going to recast my four just because it was uh, lost there. Again, this is just to double my, double my armor. Hi, Pody. Thanks for watching. Okay, I'm going to going to hit some life supports here. We're going to have the first Acolyte spawning pretty soon. I want to make sure I'm kind of full on life support so I don't have to really worry about that when he comes. You have no sound, Pody, or am I, or do I have no sound? I guess if you have no sound, you won't be able to hear me. Once we hit that uh, 10 minute mark, I, I'll also go over like a um, uh, alternative to one of the mods that you can run to, to kind of put yourself at comfortable red crits if you want. I don't think it's better than what I currently have, but it's an option. So we have violent spawn in here. Again, uh, it's a big guy, so you wanna make sure you're max stacked, and then you're gonna work on the Acolyte. Now this does do pretty good damage against the Acolyte. He's dead already there. I feel like it's harder to kill the uh, Eximuses than it is the Acolyte. It's kind of weird. sitting in the uh, Leech Eximus' pool. Got my weapon stolen. I'm also going to uh, head over to the next group of life supports. Just to hit them. And uh, again, at 10 minute mark, we'll probably leave. We might fight the second Acolyte, so he might spawn a little bit after 10 minutes, but... Oh, you have volume now? Okay. And can you hear me, Pody? I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me that had no volume. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Thanks, Pody. Pody is one of our long-standing members in the clan. A resident Swedish man. Again, once you once you fill it up, <clears throat> once you fill this up, and you get uh, you know five kills, your bar is full. Just don't spend a lot of time on the uh, um, the auto target mode. It's a very strong mode, but you don't want to waste you know time exactly getting five people. If if it only targets four, that's fine. Just let it let it loose. She'll get five more kills and you'll do it do it again. <laughs> Brace me more salt. Nine minutes in. I think the second Acolyte will spawn after the 10 minute mark, so we might have to stay to like 11-ish, but at the 10 minute mark, I will um, check our kills to see where we're at for kills for the 10 minute mark. That way we can, in the future, maybe compare it to other weapons uh, at the 10 minute mark.
Uh, I think it's Twitch-based emotes. I'm still pretty new at this. Like, I, I don't really know how to do all the intricate stuff yet, like with Twitch and even on YouTube. Okay, so 10 minutes in, we're at 339. We're at 339 kills 10 minutes in, which is, is you know, it's okay. It's a respectable amount. It's not a, amazing, but it's, it's not horrible. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very uh, smart technologically, so it takes me a bit to, to learn all the little intricacies of, of Twitch and YouTube that people probably know right off the bat. So I'll learn it eventually, but it's, it'll just take me a bit. I got my weapon stolen there. Or did I actually run out of ammo? Let me see. Yeah, I actually did run out of ammo there. Okay, so I'll be popping my first um, uh, ammo pad right there. Got the Acolyte coming in, so we want to make sure we're at max stack. So let's kill a bunch of little guys. I'm, I'm talking to myself, Bodhi, because what I actually do is I um, also record this on Shadowplay, and so I convert this to a, a YouTube video afterwards. So I stream on Twitch, and I do the uh, uh, YouTube video afterwards. It just takes, like, um, to upload to YouTube takes, like, three or four hours for me. I have a slow upload time. So this will this is on YouTube or on Twitch, obviously right now, and then um, probably at like three o'clock it'll be done uploading to YouTube, and it's the same handle. It's Salt Prime on YouTube as well. I'm not too worried about life support right now because I plan on leaving after this um, Acolyte. I've actually kind of lost track of where he is. That's why it's taking me so long to kill him. He's just kind of... Oh, there he is. He just flew past me. It's getting a little bit messy here at the end. You know, even with low stacks, though, it's doing pretty good damage against him. Let's head over to Extraction. So at the at the 10 minute mark, we were at 339 kills. Uh, right now, I'm not shortening it for YouTube, Pody, just because again, I'm pretty new to this and I'm not super great at editing. So, um, like most of my YouTube videos have been about an hour. I am instead of we I was doing 15 minutes in the Cooper Survival and then going to Lua. I'm only doing 10 minutes now in Kuba Survival, just because you really just kill trash in Kuba Survival. You don't really learn too much about the weapon other than just how it does against trash enemies. I will probably in the future, though, shorten it for YouTube. Or maybe have, like, separate videos, one showing gameplay, one showing, you know, the build, like a, a five-minute video showing the build or something like that. So just to go over the um, the build again, I'll show it here, but I also want to go over alternatives for some of these mods. So Sharpen B Bullets is a uh, mod that on kill increases your crit damage. Now with typing critical here, there's a mod that kind of competes with it called um, Hydraulic Crosshairs. So this is going to increase your crit chance. This is going to keep you a little bit more comfy in the red crit zone than sharpened bullets will. I still think sharpened bullets is better because when you're on a roll with sharp with sharpened bullets, you're already in red crits. And so if you were to put hydraulic crosshair, if you would have had hydraulic crosshairs on, it's not doing anything at that point. You're, you, you're basically wasting a mod slot. 
Whereas with sharpened bullets, you're always getting the effect of that critical damage. Um, but hydraulic crosshairs will keep you a little bit more comfy in the red crit zone. So that's kind of up to you. Like, do you want to just be in red crits more often, but possibly do a little bit less damage at times? Um, or do you just want to, you know, simply increase your uh, crit damage and not really have to worry about it? The other thing that people might look at is Prime Fulmination, and that is an option with this build, but I feel like the, the base uh, AoE blast of the regular primary fire is too small to get that big of a bonus from primary fu uh, Prime Fulmination, and the uh, alternate fire, I believe the alternate fire has a slightly bigger AoE, but I, I don't believe that Prime Fulmination would get that big of a, uh, an increase. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this Sepulchrum into uh, Lewis Survival, and we're going to see how far it goes. It might uh, fail right at the five-minute mark when the Thrax is in uh, Acolyte spawn, or it might keep going. We'll see. All right, I'm going to cast my four here just to double my armor. There we go. That'll be the last time I use an ability. And if I have to use an ammo pad, I will I will say so. So these enemies are going to start uh, a bit higher. So these guys are going to start at 180. 180 to 200. There might be some that start at 200. Or maybe they all start at 180. Uh, one thing you do have to get yourself out of the habit of doing if you're going to use this weapon, which I have not got myself out of the habit yet of, is like the uh, the Call of Duty style reload where you shoot, you know, two bullets, you kill your target, and you go for a reload. Just because the reload on this weapon is so abysmal, you don't want to constantly be in that reload animation. Like, it, it has a gigantic magazine. There's not much reason to reload super often unless, you know, you're actually empty. The server emotes, like from the Discord channel? That would be cool. Although I think some of them may be questionable. <laughs> I guess there is no full nudity, so maybe they would work. right there. I, I reloaded. I did not need to reload, so I kind of wasted uh, like four seconds just staring at enemies while I was reloading. <laughs> Claim that it's art. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to head to the uh, life support here. The Lua Conjunction is a little bit tight with life support, so I'm going to be a little bit um, like paranoid about my life supports on this. So I'm going to hit this one here, and I'm going to kind of fight near the second one and only use it when I really need it, although I might have to hit it, like, right now because I don't have any enemies near me. That'll put us at 99%, and then we can come back, and enemies should start coming in. There they are. Stealing my weapon.
<laughs> yeah, my my uh, channel's super like new right now, so I don't I don't think it's gonna be um, super successful like like right off the bat. I'm hoping that maybe after a few months, I'll get like a good uh, viewership. Right now, I've been kind of like you know sitting at like one or two viewers at a time on Twitch and uh, my YouTube videos. I I mean I feel like they're doing okay. They're at like you know 50 to 100 views after a, a like two days or so but I'm hoping that maybe after a few months it gets a lot better but I'm gonna keep doing this regardless just because I like doing it um, I should hit a life support though because now we're gonna have the Thraxes and the uh, Acolyte spawning at about the same time so I'm gonna try to kill get as many kills as I can here and then maybe try to like Congo line them to the next uh, life support. Of course, we get malice, so I have to be careful about the um, bubble he puts on me. I don't want to go too far either, though, because of the Thraxes. Oh, this is a sticky situation. I think that was the malice bubble I had on me. It's a little bit too tight. life support here as quick as I can. I don't think I'll get to it in time. I think this is going to probably be the, be the end of the Sepulchrum run here. I feel like the Sepulchrum probably could have made it past five, but a lot of uh, different things happened at the same time there. Which we kind of knew that. We knew the Acolyte and the uh, Thraxes were going to spawn at the same time. So I think best case scenario, it, it, it would have uh, passed the five minute mark. Like if I was max stacks when the uh, Acolyte spawned and the uh, Thraxis spawned, if I had a full charge of the uh, alternate fire, you know, I, th I think at that point it would have been able to make it past that five minute mark. But you can see here, like just like the Eximuses, it doesn't do super good damage against the Thraxes. Against the um, Acolyte, though, it's quite good. So it's just... Oh, I almost killed myself there. He's putting Magnetize on me. So I'll finish off the Acolyte here. I'll get my Steel Essence. I will uh, kill the Thraxes just so we can see how it does against them, but it doesn't seem like it's going to do super well. Yeah, so we're, we're, it's going to be struggling against Eximuses uh, or Thraxes, which are kind of like Eximuses. And again, we're, we're testing this weapon on its own merits, so, you know, in regular gameplay, you might have a primary that would be able to deal with these guys uh, a lot easier. The little, little enemies, this thing, you know, kills pretty quickly, but once you get to most of the uh, enemies becoming Eximuses, you're struggling.
And we're out of ammo there again. So I'm going to do an ammo pad. And we will uh, continue trying to slowly deal damage to these Braxes. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You didn't have to, though, but I appreciate it. I don't want to seem too pushy. Um, I probably will. I'm going to actually just um, end it here. I don't. This is very weak against the uh, Thraxes. I'm just going to be doing like little chip damage here and there to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, head to extraction. And then I will uh, end the current stream. But I'm going to restream again in about like five or ten minutes uh, after this. And I'm going to do a primary weapon next. And I'm trying to pick a strong weapon and then a weak weapon and a strong weapon and then a weak weapon. Or a weapon that I think might be weak. Like, I thought the Sepulchre might be a little bit weak. Um, so that's kind of why I picked it uh, this time. So the primary weapon I pick will probably be a stronger one. Yeah, I'm going to do melees also. I, I'm not going to do them, um, like, soon. I'll probably do them, like, within, like, a week, two weeks, maybe. But I will be doing those also. So just go over the Sepulchrum build one more time. Um, so we're going to go Galvanize Diffusion for multi-shot. Galvanize Crosshairs for crit chance. We're going to do Prime Pistol Gambit for crit chance, uh, Prime Target Cracker for crit damage, Lethal Torrent for multi-shot and fire rate, Hornet Strike for flat damage, Sharpen Bullets for uh, crit damage, but the alternative would be Hydraulic Crosshairs. They're both very good mods. It's kind of up to you what you want to run. Hydraulic Crosshairs is going to leave you uh, like a little bit comfier into orange and red crits, and Sharpen Bullets is going to just give you more crit damage all the time. So kind of up to you what you want to run with those two. And then uh, Prime Heated Charge, just for a, a uh, flat damage boost. And the Heat procs also help. Steady Hands for uh, Recoil Reduction, and Secondary Deadhead for the Arcane. There's other good. Uh, there's two other Arcanes you can run. You can run Merciless. It's going to help with your reload speed. And you can run Flare. But with Flare, you do need to... Um, pump out heat procs. You can't you have to be shooting all the time, making sure you're you're consistently throwing heat procs out. Wait. No. It's just the corpus peddling their wares again. Shut off the emergency um, frequency. Now, as far as like do I think this weapon is worth building? I mean if if you're looking for mastery, obviously it's gonna be worth building. But if you're limited on resources or, you know, you're limited on time, what am I gonna farm? What am I gonna uh, build? The sepulchrum is not that strong it's it's kind of like a mediocre average tier weapon and it does struggle on the the big thicker enemies like eximuses and as you saw thraxes uh, weirdly it does really good against acolytes it's just the uh, eximuses and eximus type units that it really struggles on so and it's also very expensive to build too because it's going to require a seraglass shard to build from the uh, Entrati family. And those are a bit expensive. And the other weapon that you're kind of like competing with this, like for that Seri Glass shard, is going to be the Trumna, which is the primary weapon from the Entrati family. And that's a very good weapon. So, you know, between these two, I haven't done the, the Trumna yet, but the Trumna is an extremely good weapon. And the Sepulchrum is, you know, average, mediocre at best. So if you were to choose between those two, I would definitely choose the Trum, though, over the Sepulchrum. But, yep. So that's the Sepulchrum build there. And I think we're going to end the video here. I'll be back on in about, like, five or ten minutes on Twitch, and I'm going to do a primary weapon next. All right, thanks for watching, guys.